Kevin claiming that his poor leg is hurting him. My leg is broken. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up if you want. <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash stories about Kevin. Oh my goodness, is that Kevin in a big rig saga coming down the road. <laughs> This is almost the last part. We've got this part and then one more. I'm very eager to see how all of this turns out. It turned out to not be a story about like multiple Kevins. It has just been about first Kevin, which means that user Strong Bad Jr. is probably hanging on to some more stories, isn't he? Can we grab him by the ankles and like shake those stories out of him? That's probably not the way to do it. Maybe we could ask him real nicely. <laughs> and then I could get some shout outs in his posts, which would uh, also be a pretty big brain play. I'm eager to see how things go, so let's not delay any further. We'll go ahead and jump on into it. I am live streaming this thing on Twitch. If you haven't come through and seen me quite yet, I would appreciate if you would, you know, if you want. No pressure. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this r slash stories about Kevin a cringe. Kevin in a big rig, part eight, break check. Oh my God, I hate them break checkers. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna rear end the shit out of you, don't worry. <laughs> my insurance will cover it, it's fine. Hello once again, everyone, and thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Kevin in a Big Rig. Oh, I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> I know that many of you are wearing out the edges of your seats and the refresh buttons of both Reddit and YouTube waiting for this installment and I am bringing these stories to you as quickly as my schedule will allow while also maintaining the quality that you deserve. Oh, that's the line. Yes, exactly. We got two Mommy Honker Donker stories this week too and I think that they're both quality Luckily, I didn't have to wait for any Kevin in the Big Rig. It was all just up, and I kind of just wandered in here. Although, I guess my YouTube audience does have to wait a little bit, so I'll try and push the last part out as quickly as possible, and then we can get that compilation going. Yeah, yo! <laughs> as always, if you haven't already, please check out YouTube channel, Karma Comment, Chameleon. I know my cliffhangers have been torching poor Rob for a while, and I'm sure a like and a subscribe from you would help his suffering. He puts out quality Reddit-based content every day and never fails to disappoint. Having my stories posted to his channel is truly an honor. And as I've said many times before, Rob, he is a cool guy. He's the one who encouraged me to get my stuff up on the podcast. So yeah, no ill will there. Although for the rest of this story, I will be just saying Red X because that's my head cannon. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who have a love-hate relationship with the cliffhangers, I refer you to a quote by the late Bobby Womack. Leave them wanting more, and they'll always call you back. It worked for him, it worked for Sherazad. Now, I have uh, very much the opposite of this opinion. I inundate people. I'm like, what, you want daily cringe content? Here you go, daily cringe content. It's an hour. <laughs> people are like, I don't have the time. I don't know what's going on, Red X, I'm drowning. I'm like, good, here's more. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe leave them wanting more is a, is a good way to go. Maybe we'll start uploading uh, every other day. How about that? What would you think, comments section? Let me know. <laughs> and now you can call off the angry mobs and reseal the pit of eternal Kevins because I present to you Kevin and the Big Rig part number eight, break check. Yeah. We established that part. <laughs> go ahead, do it. <laughs> uh, the backstory. This story takes place immediately after the events in part seven, Flashpoint. After making me dodge a bullet from safety after Fuck's petty little phone call, he decided to continue along Interstate 90 eastbound through Montana. The winter storm that had forced us to shut down had slowed and moved south during the night, leaving us running along its northern edge. But we hadn't seen 
the last of it. Yeah, I'm sure. The last of the storm, nor the last of Kevin's shenanigans. And that's what I showed up for, honestly. <laughs> really, I showed up for the fireworks at the end, but I'm sure there's going to be at least a few more sparks before the powder keg goes off. After sending the email that I hope would seal Kevin's fate, I tried to get some sleep. It wasn't easy going over the possible scenarios and contingencies to which launching such an unexpected attack would lead. I didn't expect a quick resolution or even that I would be taken seriously at first. And that's probably accurate. Like, like we've established, this is a whole company of Kevin's essentially. And really all that was fine. If I, a lowly truck driver, wasn't enough to get a trucking company to stick to their safety first policy, then I had some bigger guns to play with. I need only to bide my time, give them a fair chance, but give no quarter should they try to hide from their responsibility. And they most definitely will. If management had any sense, they would play ball and get this moron off the highway as soon as possible. <laughs> if they had any sense. Yeah, uh, about that, we're fresh out. <laughs> I woke up again around mid-afternoon. Kevin was still driving, but knowing that he would be out of time pretty soon, I decided to get up and see what new mess fuck had gotten us into. I pull on my boots and expecting nothing, I check my phone. To my surprise, there is an unread email from my fleet manager. Hmm, acknowledgement. Now you're winding yourself into the web, aren't you? Okay, it read. We'll forward this to safety. Thanks. Uh-huh, I say to myself, passing the buck and covering your ass. Smart move. At least one person did the right thing, so let's see if the rest will follow suit. I close the email and head up front. To my relief, Kevin was on course and with enough fuel to get to the next fuel stop. Wow, I am shocked. I mean, not that shocked. <laughs> He's just basically doing his job. I say nothing to him and he says nothing to me. Awkward? Okay, I was born awkward. Bring it on, Skippy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you don't want to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Let's just both sit here and die together. <laughs> I take the computer truck, scrolling through messages to see if anyone from the company had sent anything related to the email bombs that I had dropped on half the company. Again, nothing. They were either ignoring me outright, which would be very bad for them in the long run, or I had unleashed a demon from the safety department who demanded a blood price for everyone that let Kevin go on this long. In any case, there wasn't much that I could do until safety made their move or made a decision not to move. I mean, I don't know how long you, you've been asleep here, OP, but corporate bureaucracy takes a while for the tail to catch up with the head. I wouldn't expect an answer for at least a few more days, let alone same day. Same day delivery? Nah, <laughs> I don't think so. I think that they're weighing their options before, you know, they reach a conclusion and decide to act. And all of that, absolutely fine. As long as, at the end of it all, they do decide to act. I set the computer down lit a cigarette, and took out my phone again. I forwarded the nuclear email to my then-girlfriend, telling her that if anything happened to me, she was to get this to a lawyer, press charges for negligence, gross misconduct, whatever else, and sue this goddamn company into bankruptcy. Wow, this is like turning up the heat, isn't it? <laughs> if anything happened to me, are you suspecting some foul play, OP? Jesus! I also BCC her to all future emails, so she would have them as well. Dramatic? Yeah, maybe, but I wasn't gonna let this get swept under the rug. I think it's highly dramatic, but it doesn't hurt anything, I guess. Except maybe putting a bug up your girlfriend's ass. Can you imagine how much she's probably worrying? <laughs> she's like, what do you mean if anything happens to you? 
No, it's fine. It's fine, probably. <laughs> it's fine, probably. The three least comforting words in the English language. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, so next I checked the weather and see that the storm had indeed moved to the south. Although the weather was clearing, the temperature hovered barely above freezing during the day and quickly dropped at night. With the ice and snow from the previous storms, this presented a dangerous situation. Ice would thaw during the day, allowing safe travel, but would refreeze into black ice after sunset, making driving unsafe. Icy roads meant more slowdowns and shutdowns from safety, making this trip even more torturous, nerve-wracking, and tempting to smother fuck in his sleep. Just bury him in a shallow grave and claim that he wandered off or something. <sighs> tempting. But after the email I had sent, yeah, that would look just a little bit too suspicious. I watch Law and Order. <laughs> uh, but really, can't we just like, you know, at least leave him outside of the truck or something like that? Like, yeah, maybe he survives. And if he doesn't, well, that's unfortunate. You don't want to cover up your, your guilty deeds too much. You know what I mean? Just drive around and pretend that you were looking for him. And then once he freezes to death, you find him and call the cops like, Oh no! <laughs> How could this happen? No, I'm not, I'm not trying to give any tips or anything. And you probably would have to go to jail for at least a little bit. But it's not going to be a life sentence. So, I don't know, weigh your options. Whatever. <laughs> Doesn't matter. This isn't really what happens. Uh, Kevin drove around for another hour before the computer alarm signaled that his drive time was running low. Lucky for him, our next fuel stop is only a few miles away, so we get to the next truck stop, and Kevin, claiming that his poor leg is hurting him. My leg is broken. <laughs> left me to handle the refueling while he goes inside. Oh yes, my leg hurts so bad, I need to go buy some hot dogs. <laughs> uh, you're just useless, ain't you? And so I top off the tanks, give the truck a quick once over and go inside myself for some supplies to get me through a hard night of driving. And I'm pretty sure OP doesn't do meth, but man, that helps out a lot. It's gonna keep you awake like nothing else. <laughs> Are you all right? Never better! Keeps me awake! Uh, it's probably just some caffeine. That's fine. A little bit of Red Bull. Crush up those caffeine pills. <laughs> Take a little bump when you need it. <laughs> uh, I'm a terrible influence. As it turned out, that hard night only lasted about three hours as the frozen roads forced another shutdown, just as I predicted. Well, I hope you didn't caffeinate too much, because now you gotta go to sleep or something. <laughs> this went on for about two more days. Slow going due to safety mandated slowdowns during the day, and complete shutdowns coming at night when the roads froze over once again. I barely said a word to him, but Kevin, thinking that he had subjugated me with his little anonymous phone call, regaled me with his tired, old stories. <laughs> it's gotta be really terrible, right? He doesn't remember he told you all these things before. <laughs> You're gonna hear the same ones forever. Forever! We talked about a life sentence earlier. This is a life sentence right now. <laughs> what I'm experiencing is worse than hell. Car wrecks, jailbird nephew, 21 day coma. How he was gonna cut the engine brakes out of the truck. Uh, I began to sympathize with Bill Murray's character in Groundhog Day. Every day was simply just a repeat of the previous day. And yeah, for a little while there in Groundhog Day, Bill, Bill Murray was having some fun. But that wears out relatively quick. <laughs> Adding to the frustration was the lack of a response to my email from safety. I was getting the feeling that they were just actively ignoring me, but I stayed true to my word sending them daily updates on Kevin's actions. 
Most of the updates were simply repeats of previous issues, but one would think that if a peon was willing to take the time to do their job, they would at least send a thank you. By the end of the second day, I started planning to go even higher, wondering how I would go about sending a certified mail to the company's CEO. I mean, you do what you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? I still think two days is a relatively quick process, right? They might still be deliberating, maybe give it a week, but then you have to endure Kevin for longer. So yeah, I guess, put a rush on it, OP. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Uh, around early afternoon of the third day, we made it down the eastern slope of the Rockies through Bozeman, Montana. The roads were clear and dry, and nothing from safety was telling us to stop. Thank God for small miracles. I was driving at the time and I couldn't help but feel relieved. Montana is a beautiful state, but in that instance, it was Hades. In my mind, I imagined William Shatner saying, warp speed, Mr. Sulu, and gun the accelerator down the interstate headed for Wyoming. I managed to get us as far as the port of entry in Sheridan, Wyoming before running out of drive time late that evening. I go inside, check with the Wyoming Department of Transport, and get a weather update. Wyoming DOT POE staff are awesome people. They tell me that the roads are clear between there and South Dakota, and that is the first good news that I've had in a while. Honestly, it sounds really terrible to get stuck in a storm like that and just have to slog through. Are you still getting paid by the mile, even though they're telling you not to go anywhere? <laughs> I'm gonna be broke because I'm just like constantly stuck in my job or something like that. Oh, clear roads, clear skies. That's what I need if I'm gonna make ends meet, all right? <laughs> I show them all the paperwork they asked for, stopped by a restroom and headed back to the truck. In the dark parking area, I see the hood of the cab rolled open and fuck is shining a flashlight underneath. Oh, this can't be good. He pulled the wiring out again, didn't he? <laughs> That's odd, but I think that he's just checking the oil or looking for fluid leaks. It's a bit of a walk to the truck from the office. The POE has a large parking lot, and most of the closer spaces are taken up by other trucks that are staying for the night. I expected Kevin to be done in just a few seconds, but by the time I get to the truck, he is still underneath the cab. I can see a pair of pliers in his hand <laughs> and suddenly become concerned. Oh, this is not good. We've seen this all happen before. It is Groundhog's Day, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm dying. There was nothing wrong with the truck and there was no reason that Kevin needed any kind of tool not that he should even be trusted with one in either case. What the hell are you doing? I ask. Fuck, not having heard me approach, nearly jumped out of his skin. <laughs> oh, I was looking at something. What? I ask in my not messing around tone. Uh, I saw online how you could disable the Jake brakes. <laughs> I was gonna try it. <laughs> Uh, he's still on with that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's a reason that the guy at the repair shop didn't do you for it. Because it's dangerous. It's a horrible idea. But somehow, OP was not even mad. Just absolutely fed up with this shenaniganery. Get in the goddamn truck, you dumbass. If you try that shit again, I'll make sure safety and maintenance get the video. <laughs> you need to hide his tools, but see the problem there is that Kevin himself is just a giant tool. <laughs> Not even a tool, because a tool has a use. Just a meatball, a fetid meatball you'd never want to put in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin just starts sulking and closes the hood. I climb inside, send another email update, including how he just tried to disable an integrated safety system on the truck. This is a major no-no, 
equal to cutting the brake lines on a car. For a split second, I was tempted to let him hang himself with that stunt, but I decided not to because given his track record, the truck would likely explode with both of us inside of it. And that's simply not a sacrifice I'm willing to make, OP. <laughs> we would get rid of Kevin and that's beautiful, uh, but then there would be no more Strong Bad Jr. And that would be a tragedy in itself because I know you had more Kevin stories. I need, I need you to tell me some more of them Kevin stories. <laughs> <laughs> but no pressure though, hee <laughs> hee. First Kevin finally pulls out of the POE and gets us going again. I settle into the bunk because I really didn't even want to talk to him anymore. It takes a while to get to sleep, partly due to fuck's poor driving and partly because my brain is busy planning out strategies for my inevitable battle with Kevin and safety. Do you think that it'll be a battle? I guess it will. Safety will try to protect their baby boy. Maybe he's also a son of the manager, like in Chris Trucker, right? Oh, spoilers if you haven't watched that series. I would think that Safety would just like dispose of Kevin once they figure out what he's doing, what he's like. Uh, but I never fail to be surprised by bureaucracy. <laughs> so Kevin drove through the night, managing to get through Wyoming and South Dakota, just shy of the Minnesota border. I wake up late the next morning and check my email. Nothing. Keep digging yourselves in a deeper hole, I think, while getting ready. I was beginning to think that they weren't taking me seriously. Then, when he hears me stirring behind him, Kevin yells back, eh, Dispatch wants us to head back to the main terminal when we deliver. Oh, I say, legitimately surprised. Did they say why? No, Kevin replied before impatiently getting out of the truck. And so it begins, I think to myself. And now take a free action to make a finger pyramid of evil and maybe a, a, a villainous laugh if you'd like. <laughs> yes, excellent. <laughs> After Chicago, two of us will drive back to the terminal. But only one of us will leave. I was determined that no matter what, I would not continue with this fool after the battle with management was over. I had been tossed around, frozen, chewed out by customers and management, deprived of sleep, and driven to the point of insanity over the past three months. And I was not going to put up with it any longer. If they tried to pull that, uh, you two need to get along crap, I would forward everything that I had on them to OSHA, DOT, and any other government agency that I could think of. It would take no time at all to find enough dirt to bury the entire godforsaken company and send half the managers to jail for negligence. God, you are really burning this whole thing to the ground, OP, and I love to see it. Let the fireworks show begin! <laughs> I would convince my friends and family to buy stock in competitors first, of course. Is that insider trading? Ah, no, no. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine! You do a little jail time again, you get out, it's fine, it's not a life sentence. You make some money off the deal, it's good. <laughs> Fire me, and I wouldn't stop until I owned every truck in the fleet to soothe my mental and emotional distress. As for fuck, well, they'd have to dig up half the shoulders on Interstate 80 to find his shallow grave. That is, if I even felt gracious enough to dig him one, instead of making him dinner for a pack of coyotes. I had nothing to lose at this point, and I was ready for a fight. God, this is so beautiful. Honestly, I'd love to see some of this vitriol coming from Mommy Honker Donkers. He sort of seems like a beaten man, you know? He's just sort of resigned to his fate. But Strong Bad Jr., oh no! <laughs> He's gonna make everybody regret every goddamn thing. And I think we need more of that, you know? I think there would be less beard tails in the world if we had some more of that. I settled into the driver's seat and set up my GPS. It was then that I noticed something odd. On the steering wheel, there are two sets of controls. 
The left side had the cruise control, and the right was the activation button for the engine brakes. These buttons were the recess type, with a protective rubbed blister and a back lit with an LED so it can be seen in low light. The engine brake switch was damaged, not worn or dirty, but completely cut away. I look closely and I can clearly see what I had been afraid of, the telltale cuts from a knife blade. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Uh, yep, he, he really doesn't like those Jake breaks for some goddamn reason. <laughs> Why aren't they called Kevin breaks? We have to get rid of them! <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna take your whole head off if you take that button off. And now you got back your words up, OP. You gotta go bury him somewhere. It wasn't some accidental snag or wearing away from use. There were clear, distinct lines marking where the rubber blister had been cut away. The button itself was fortunately still intact, and it functioned. So I pressed it, and the indicator light came on. What a moron, dude. <laughs> you remove the, the outer rubber from a button, and you're like, hey, hey that button's not going to work anymore. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, what a moke, what a maroon. <laughs> it, it was immediately clear that Fuck wasn't able to remove the engine brakes. They were integrated into the engine, after all. <laughs> and he tried to make it so that I couldn't turn him on. Well, too bad for him that the truck's designers decided that the engine brakes were important enough to warrant protecting the on switch. All Kevin managed to do was give me one more nail for his coffin. Clear proof that he had tried to tamper with the truck. I snapped a photo and emailed it to them explaining that this was not like this when I went off duty. And I made sure that those knife marks were unmistakable. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, this snowball is getting bigger and bigger, and once it hits Kevin, he's gonna be obliterated. At least if the company decides to do the right thing. Man, this is juicy. <laughs> so Kevin comes back into the truck after a bit. I don't mention the switch at all, but without being prompted, Kevin demanded, hey, Don't use those Jake brakes! <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, uh, you're off duty, so go away, all right? <laughs> I'll handle it. I say nothing at first, but when we leave out, I make sure that they engage on the way out of the parking lot, and I dare him to say anything more about it. <laughs> of course, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most beautiful thing. He knows he's gonna get his ass kicked. That's one thing I'll say for both uh, Honker Dockers and Strong Bad Jr. They're not scared to give their respective idiots a, a knuckle sandwich. A bit of a knuckle sandwich! <laughs> you want a knuckle sandwich? Okay then. I drive all through Minnesota without stopping. Every time I have to reduce speed, I make sure to use the engine brakes. <laughs> uh, they weren't as loud as older models, but it sure does make a distinctive sound when the truck was coasting. This is so petty and I'm living for it, dude. <laughs> uh, you're gonna make him hang himself. You just give him enough rope, he's on the way. I knew that it was pissing him off and there was nothing that he could do about it. Any more damage to the steering wheel and or suspicious damage under the hood, and he would have to explain why he damaged a perfectly good truck in order to disable a safety device. <laughs> Little did either of us know that the next message that came from the computer would change everything. It was from the fleet manager. OP, urgent, call me ASAP. Uh-oh, I say. Sounds like all hell just broke loose. The company did not allow cell phone use while driving, even hands-free was prohibited, and I wasn't giving Kevin anything to use against me. I decided to wait until the next fuel stop to make that call. 
I get to the truck stop, refuel, and go inside the store to place the call while taking the legally mandated 30 minute break. Hey, fleet manager, this is OP, driver ID 9876, I say. Oh, yeah, she replied, seeming very hesitant. OP, what the hell's going on? There was no point in playing dumb at this point. You can't launch the professional email equivalent of a nuclear warhead and then play innocent. You got my emails. <laughs> oh yes, it's certainly rolling downhill now, isn't it? And upon closer inspection, it's not a snowball at all. It's a shitball. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we're all gonna die. Yeah, I did, she replied. And so did every department head in the company, and, and safety's been going apeshit over this. I really didn't want to, I say, only a half truth, but Kevin's getting more and more dangerous and I cannot stay in this truck with him anymore. Actually, it's Kevin that I need to talk to you about. Okay, what's up? Well, in your email you said he had memory problems and he said he'd been in a coma for 21 days. Yeah? Are you sure he said 21 days? It was 21 days, I reply, leaving no room for doubt in my tone. He has told me the same story every day for three months, and it is always the same. 21 days. Yeah, I thought so. He, he told me the same thing, she claimed. What the fuck? She knew about this? Are you kidding me? I wanted to blow up right there, but I managed to keep my cool. What's going on? I asked calmly. I I'm not sure, she replied. Safety wanted me to ask you because it struck them as odd. It was 21 days, I repeat, just to drive home the point. Okay, but are you sure? Three weeks, 21 days? You double sure, right? <laughs> right. All right. Safety wants you guys back here now. We'll get someone else to run the load. You just get here so we can get this mess straightened out. I was tempted to probe for more information, but I had the feeling that there was nothing left to say. All right. I have enough hours and fuel, so we should get there tonight. Good deal, she replied. We'll talk tomorrow morning. And hangs up. What does that possibly mean? Something hinky going on with Kevin and how long his coma was? Uh, is, does this disqualify him from a driving job? The plot is definitely thickening. <laughs> I'm very eager to see where this goes. Hot damn. It took me a few seconds to process what had just taken place. I had expected that the emails would cause a bit of a stir, but to have a truck divert nearly 200 miles to relay a load was unheard of. Well, I got their attention, at least. <laughs> Hell yeah, you did. Some heads are gonna roll over this. But the question is, whose head? <laughs> I head back out to the truck. Kevin was still sleeping, and I had no intention of waking him up to tell him of our new orders. I program the route into the GPS and verify it with the Atlas. The company's headquarters was only 200 miles or so away, but getting there would take us well away from the interstates and any other major highway. It was shaping up to be a long trip along mostly narrow two-lane highways south through Wisconsin, Nebraska, and Iowa. Idaho all over again. God, that's so many places. I kind of forget that the middle of the country even exists, don't you? <laughs> Sorry to all my middle of the country people. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, Iowa. That's that's a thing, isn't it? <laughs> I then checked the weather and realized that I had royally pissed off someone in a past life. You remember that winter storm that we hit in Idaho and Montana? Well, it was back! Only now it had eaten its Wheaties and bulked up into a full-blown blizzard. Almost the entire route from the truck stop 
all the way to the company's main terminal, was in its sights, and it had itchy trigger fingers. The National Weather Service had issued alerts for the entire area with predictions of heavy snow, high winds, and whiteout conditions. Yeah, sounds like fun, right? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, a blast for sure! You thought you could just sneak this one in, drive there before Kevin woke up? Nope. We're gonna have to have a real hard conversation when old boy finally awakens. Under normal situations, I would have taken one look at the weather radar, said fuck that noise, and told dispatch that I wasn't even about to attempt that run. They could simmer for a couple of days. Unfortunately, as was the case with Kevin, nothing was ever normal. <laughs> <laughs> I had to factor his stupidity into every decision that I made, and this one was a very big issue. The issue boiled down to the company's weather shutdown system. For whatever reason, the shutdowns only pertain to certain highways, primarily interstates and major US highways between designated towns, mile markers, boundaries, etc., it did not, however, pertain to geographic areas like cities, counties, or states. Instead of all trucks operating in this part of that state you need to shut down, they were like, any truck on such and such highway in such and such state between mile markers X and Y shut down now. And the big problem with this company's system is that it didn't issue shutdowns for secondary routes like two-lane highways. In bad weather, the decision to shut down was a judgment call on the part of the driver. And the decision was never questioned or punished. Federal regulations make it very clear that the driver made the final decision as to when and if the trip would continue. I understood that. But Kevin, on the other hand... <laughs> oh, God! Uh, they didn't tell us to shut down, we gotta keep going until the big rig falls over. <laughs> uh, as for his precious company route, well, there wasn't one. The company assigned routes were only generated for trucks under a load assignment. Being diverted like this meant that we had to figure it out ourselves. I had no problem with it, but Kevin... Uh, he'd probably take a wrong turn into a ghost town where we would become the inspiration for a new horror movie franchise. Hey, there's worse ways to go, I guess. <laughs> you can see your name in lights one last time, OP. At least theoretically. You won't actually see it because, you know, you'll be dead. Murdered by that horror movie villain or whatever. <laughs> Just give me a break, I plead, to any higher power that might have been listening. I had just gotten word that the hornet's nest I threw into the company's garden party were starting to sting some very important asses. And now I'm going to get taken out by the ghost of Frosty the Snowman. Uh, I would have gladly waited it out, but Kevin, being the little sycophant ass kisser that he was, would think that if safety didn't tell him to shut down, he didn't need to shut down. Blinding snow, icy roads, no visibility. It didn't matter to him. He was a company driver, and the company told him what to do. Shut down? Shut down? <sighs> Only if the company was the one to tell him to do so. So if the company told you to jump off a bridge? Yeah, actually, he probably would. Never mind. <laughs> now, Kevin hadn't killed us this far. Not for lack of trying, but this was just too much. I made up my mind at that point that no matter what, Kevin would not sit in the driver's seat at all that night. He wouldn't drive the first inch during that storm, even if I had to kill him. I, I don't think that's how the story goes, but yeah. <laughs> Hardline stance, I, I get you. If he took over, we would surely head down the highway at full speed, run head first into a total whiteout, slam on the brakes, and send us both on a one-way trip to the afterlife. This little bastard had been dragging me through hell for so long, and he was not going to get 
another chance to kill me. Oh man, this is this is super spicy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, then how are you going to keep the truck in place, OP? Hmm, you got some uh, sneaky plans yourself, dear? <laughs> I took a deep, ragged, and exasperated breath. I had two choices in front of me. Literally, kill Kevin or tackle the blizzard ravaged back roads myself. Rock, meet hard place. It has been nearly seven years since that day. Looking at the phone screen with the route plunging into the storm's radar image, every now and then I often wonder if I had made the right decision. I don't know how long I agonized over it, but when the decision was made, it wasn't made with absolute certainty. But one thing was perfectly clear. There was only one way that both of us would make it out of this sub-zero hell alive. Fuck you, Kevin. I say to myself as I fasten my seatbelt, release the brakes, and roll out to meet this blizzard head on. Fuck you. After everything you've put me through, I'm still trying to save your worthless life. And this is where part eight ends. I do apologize that this post has been so late in coming. This week has just been crazy for me. I've had to work longer hours than usual at my job, so writing time has been cut down. Not to worry though, as I am still determined to bring these stories to you for your enjoyment. I know how many of you are eagerly awaiting to see the fallout of the nuclear email and how many bodies hit the ground before the dust is finally settled. So much happened during this time and it would be criminal to leave out any crucial details that take away from the story. Part 9, which I will try my best to have posted this weekend, will be the conclusion of the First Kevin saga. Did First Kevin manage to avoid OP's wrath during the blizzard? Did OP make the right call? How did Kevin even get a license being this stupid? Well, all questions will be answered in part number nine. Once again, if you haven't already, please check out Red X over at YouTube, Red X. Red X does a phenomenal job telling my stories and those from many other Reddit users. So a like and a subscribe is the least you could do for his efforts. Until next time, remember only you can prevent Kevinism. Yes, indeed. Please spay and neuter your Kevins as soon as possible. <laughs> this is uh, quite a climax. It's like the blizzard is just this sentient creature that wants to stop you from dealing the final blow to the, the monster that is first Kevin. And I'm totally here for this. I am so hungry for part number nine. I guess we'll just have to wait a little longer to see how it goes. But once this saga is wrapped, bing, bang, boom, I'm going to be super excited to have what would be the uh, the first not neckbeard story saga compilation. So that's pretty cool. I hope that you guys are looking forward to it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Plugs, playlist, podcasts, you know, Spotify, iTunes, Teespring, my Amazon link to my microphone. There's all kinds of stuff down there. We also got our social medias, Twitter, Discord, Facebook, and Twitch, where I live stream this whole thing. Come on through. Say hello. I would appreciate it. Uh, we've also got my Patreon and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous channel members. I would like to thank them all as I do every episode Jerry Jerry much so thank you too Fake Danica Train Boy, Lickalush Loser, Organic Steve, Skyler May, Amara, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Death Flagship, Bearded Snake, and Buy Two, Get One Hand. Yes! Switching it over to Patreon, we've got Dark Lushes, Harley Holder, Robin Alloway, Camille Sarah, Chase, Blue Kraken, Roxanne Wilson, Jerry Conrad, Inky, Captain Clan, Jerry, Aaron, Jerry, Esteban, Burrow, Blank Side, Organic Steve, Beat Tomlin, Mega Mouse, Without Tell, Jerry, Painful Forgiveness, No Forgiveness, Silent Revolver, PCB, Fluxer, The Jerry of Industry, The Original Jerry, Jerry, Tick Jerry, Destiny Piper, Jerry, Shitsune, Salty Wizard, Two Eleven Jerry, The Two Jerrys, A Very Tired Jerry, A Chusty Dragonian Jerry, and Frankenberry, Ain't Gotta Hide in Bitch Though, <laughs> Assassin Punch Jerry, Aurora Wild Heart, The Moon Baron, Baby Jerry, Bailey Joy, Peter Jerry, Benji and the Jets, Bitch, Gremlin, Blade, Hero, Plimple Jerry, Frost, Dragon, Catholic Jerry, Commander J.T., Courtney K. Wood, Welcome to the Fold, Dennis Ding, Dr. Lars, Aaron Error, Esports, Frozen Never Studio, Fire Drake, Get to the Doodles, uh, Shameless Plug, Get Commissions Open, yeah, check it out. Adrian BR, I'm Slim Jerry, I'm the real Jerry, I'm the Slim Jerry, I'm the Slim Jerry, Inquisitor Jerry, Irish Pirate Jerry, Cut a Stowaway Jerry, Iron Allo, Arradiated Jam, Jay Uncoon, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry the Outlaw on the Truck, Hong Kong, Jerry, Maya was a Bullfrog, <laughs> John Hero, Crowley, Cullen Dragon, Legend Maker, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry O, Luca was a clever Patreon name, like and subscribe, but Lady Dicks, Malama Man, Melgar the Destroyer, Metal Fetcher, Needless King, Paragon Soul, Phantom of Vines, Jerry Kins and Jerry Bell, Queen's Quailers and Quad Myers, Ramtide Lacrimage, Rose, Jerry Miller, Sarita the Lolita, Sassy Octopus, Sa, Scarlet Seven, Sergeant Gay Cop, Bringer of the Law, Silo Wimp, Stephanie Goodner, Sign Empty Boom, Stick, Pearl, Tomago, Tabby, Little Tato Fair, The Gypsy Bomber, The Italian Ray Hondino, The Little Sue, Oh, what's your fuss key? Trying to find another mob to get back to the real world. Ah, you probably don't want to blow to that balloon knot. B3 Prime, Vanguard Angel, Viking Jerry, Wiki Tag, Zephyr the Gargoyle, 
Or Clay, Comrade Mooney, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is though. Redwin, not the Saints Blessing. Third stuff, Venom Jerry, Wasabi Jerry, Jace Christensen, One Leg Jerry, the Neckbeard Hunter, a normal Jerry, holds up a giant bag of popcorn, Bravo Snags, and O'Shea. <laughs> Admiral T Tank, Amber Alder, Atomic Jerry Zilla, Bartender Kelia, Blueberry and Apple Pie, Broken Spine Horse Radish, Cake Jerry, California Jerry Girl, Shepherd Sunlock, Chicago Panda, Corey Desart, sometimes. <laughs> Crypt Titties, Stefan Jerry, Death Tuna, Dopamine Dane Jerry, and Sporty Dude, Ghost Mouth, He Cannot. Inside you there are two wolves, one is cringe, the other is cringe, you are uh, cringe. Inside you there are no wolves, only a chihuahua. Yo, get up, Bell. <laughs> Xander Jerry is roaming the streets of Finland, hunting down the Rudo Headband. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Geralt of Rivia, Jerry and Thomas is having New Year's, we'll be apocalypse. Jerry Springer, the results are in, you are not the neckbeard. Jerry the Sussy Baka, Jerry's mom has got it going on. Check out the mustache on Jerry Aldo Rivera. Jerry Boxers, Jerry Role Playing Game, Keen Tails, Kid Marvelous, Kids Again, Lucia Lovecraft, Machia CD. Maybe next time, you'll forget Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor Eye, Seldom Dark, She's my Jerry Pie. Skymar Ravenswood, Snarry, the Snob Jerry. Snowbeard, what is best in life? Uh, to crush these deadly men, to cheat a tabletop, and to hear the elations of your waifu. <laughs> Spooky the Rogue, Spoopy Scabby, Jerry Tom is relevant all year round. Techno Dubs, the original Jerry, there are two wolves inside me. Spit roasted Jerry. <laughs> to Infinite Jerry and Beyond, Unkale. Throws too late Mountain Dew, grow by that beer, grow. Uh, it's your time, hold Red X Marker. Hygiene, it's your time, hold Red X Marker. Humility, and also thank you to my $1 patrons as well. Bless up to all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike, beautiful people that they are. Thank you for helping to support the channel. If you can join them in supporting us monetarily, that is huge. But if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos, right? That's what you gotta do, right? <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, friends, uh, bye-bye.